Okay, so a couple of videos now looking at Ultrabeat and this first one we're going to take a bit of a features overview just so we're familiar with the interface and know what we're doing with it. So create a software instrument here and load in the Ultrabeat drum synth and here's our user interface and what we can do here, we'll look later in the later videos at step sequencing in Ultrabeat actually features uh, quite a nice step sequencer we can just turn it on here and for each drum kit that we load we get a drum pattern or a sequence here so it means it's a good way of previewing the drum sound so we can load in different drum kits in here using this drop down or just scrolling right to left And uh, we get really fine detailed control over each drum sound in Ultrabeat. So I click on the different samples over here and loads in this section in the middle here. This is different, this is specific to each sample. We, we have a bit of a mixer here as well, so we can load. Turn stuff up and down very quickly, very easily, pan it. Right to left. Uh, or we can mute or solo stuff very easily. We also have a master volume up here. So we have three main sound sources in Ultrabeat. Uh, we have the sample down here that we can change actually but at the moment it's playing back a sample. We have this noise section here and we also have a, another voice section really, uh, by default it's set to an oscillator so down here we have the sample, we can change this to an oscillator if we want or we can have it playing back a sample or we can turn it into a physical kind of physical modelling sound for the FM type sound uh, with it being a sample we can reverse the sample very quickly here change how velocity sensitive it is and then we have some pitch controls and I like when you change the pitch it tells you the frequency you know so if you want your kick drum to be punching at 145 Hertz you could do that very quickly you know it gives you that frequency readout you can hold alt or option and click and it resets the values uh, you have a level control here and some really nice envelopes. To really customize the transients, really shape stuff. And we can actually can zoom on the envelopes here, click and drag to the right or to the left to zoom on your envelope. And then you can get the envelope back into focus very quickly, press that zoom button there. Or you can zoom in on the attack. You should zoom in on the attack or zoom in on the decay there. And then turn the noise off. We'll now take a look at this section at the top. If I turn that off. Because uh, we have this. It's just playing back an oscillator. It's just playing back a sine wave. And it's quite a simple sound. But this is a great way of very quickly adding low end to a kick drum. You can tune it here, so you could tune it to, if you say your, your track was in D, for example, you can tune your sine wave to D very quickly, or C, and you're just adding some nice warm blow end to a kick drum very quickly, and you have more control so we can start driving it, changing the wave shape a little bit and that's represented in this waveform readout tell you it's more of a square wave now or we can activate the FM and then it becomes a frequency modulator modulating the frequency of the other sample 
or we can have it as a sidechain signal. Okay, let's load in our drum now again. So we also have a filter section, an EQ section, and an LFO section up here. The LFO is a modulator. We can start EQing our sounds. We have a two band EQ. Each band is either a shelf or a bell filter. And remember, this is for each sample loaded within your kit. You have all of this control. And you can turn the bands on and off here. Very useful for adding a bit of low end to the kick and then scooping out some of the mids. Compare. And we can send any one of these sources, the, the sample, the noise, or the oscillator, we can send it to the filter here using these buttons. So if we solo up this kick drum, can send this into the filter section. And in the filter section, we can either have a low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject filter. Then we can turn the filter on and off. And we have the cutoff and resonance controls. And we also have some distortion controls. distortion or we can have it as a bit crusher so we could have some setup like this where the kick drums getting quite heavily driven and filtered slightly however our sine wave is remaining pure and clean and not getting driven at all because we've not sent it into the filter so Really nice scope, lots of really nice control. Now let's load in a clap. Because what we didn't look at previously was this noise section. So we can actually just add a layer of noise to one of our drum sounds. Turn this on here. Then we have a filter control, a level control. We can change the filter type for the noise. Or increase the resonance. This dirt control is a bit like a bit crusher. I know we can send this into the master filter and apply some further distortion to everything. And I do like the noise, it sounds great on claps, it also sounds great on hi-hats. So where's our hi-hat? So this load in a few more of these. So if you want to add a bit of a burst of high energy, kind of high frequency to this, just turn on this noise. Maybe filter it slightly, turn the level down. Just adding a nice subtle bit of top end presence to a hi-hat very quickly. Okay, it's a bit of a brief overview there of some of the master controls for Ultra Beat. In the next video, we'll look at some more specific sound design with Ultra Beat and also how we can use the envelopes and the LFOs as modulators.